Good Friday today. So, uh, so yeah, we're entering into um, this really special weekend and, and maybe the most unique circumstances of my life that, that I, I can remember at least. And, and, uh, but, but yeah, but uh, Jesus is still Lord. So it, it's good to be here. All right. Um, tell us a little bit about what St. Dominic's uh, has planned uh, for the weekend. Yeah, so we've been, um, St. Dominic's has actually been televising our Mass um, for a really long time, for almost 40 years now. And um, and so with that, we also have a, a studio that uh, produces a um, different video programming and stuff. So we've had good things in place um, to put out content online and, and, and other ways of doing that. Unfortunately, since Hurricane Michael, we've been uh, celebrating Mass in a tent. Uh, we're still not back in our church, but we've kind of cobbled together a system. And so all of our services are, are streamed um, on WMEB, but also on, on our Facebook page and on our, our, our web page as well. And uh, we're just trying, we just, we just uh, launched a Stations of the Cross that I led on Facebook earlier today. And then we'll have our 3 p.m. Um, uh, uh, Good Friday service uh, streamed uh, today as well. And then same thing for Holy Saturday for the Easter Vigil. And then, then our Easter Mass is at 10 a.m. And our Spanish Mass at 1232. Uh, they'll, they'll be going out on uh, 10 a.m. the WMBB and Facebook and then the 1230 Spanish just on Facebook Live. But using every means that we have to be able to just continue to connect people and, and, and uh, continue to celebrate the liturgies. Because in the Catholic world, though we're not having public Masses, we're still celebrating Mass each day. We're still celebrating those liturgies just without a congregation. Sure. Um, uh, you know, you mentioned that you guys are, you guys are basically working out of a tent. Um, this community's been through an awful lot, uh, you know, over the last two years. We've had Hurricane Michael. Now the whole country and the whole world is in this pandemic. What do you What do you say to folks uh, when they maybe question you about some of these events? Yeah, well, in, in a certain sense, it's, it's like we've been here before, um, <laughs> and uh, so that, that's you know, and, and we've gotten through. And I think that that's an important thing for for anybody to be able to recognize, particularly when you're going through a time of, of darkness or desolation to be able to look on the past with, with the eyes of faith and, and recognize, okay, I've, I've been through difficult moments before and I'm still here. Um, now that, that can begin to weigh on you when it all builds on top of each other. And, and I have so many um, parishioners and, and uh, friends and, and employees that are still living with family members are still living in temporary housing or, or in trailers. And uh, so to have, you know, these, these other very unique circumstances kind of piled on top of that can be difficult but I think it's important for us to, to just recall uh, that, that, man, we've already accomplished so much with so little um, so that we can face what's in front of us as long as we're, 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 uh, we're continuing to, to support one another and uh, stay rooted in our faith. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about the significance of Good Friday. And, uh, you know, maybe for most of our audience, uh, many of our audience probably are Christians or, or Catholics, but some of them aren't. What's the what's the significance of Good Friday? What's that mean? Yeah, it's it seems like almost a misnomer because this is the day that Jesus died. So um, for anyone who maybe has seen a movie about the life of Jesus or picked up a Bible at any point or maybe just been been to a church service, um, Jesus's death is is a pretty central event. And, and for something that's so unjust and so um, on the on its face, so horrific. How can we call this day good? Um, but uh, but the reality of what happens Friday is we uh, discover uh, God's infinite love for us. In a sense, God's heart is opened wide for us. So we discover who God is. That He's a God. He's God who loves us, who dies for us. And because too, because of what we receive from Him, we receive our, our own dignity and worth too. So uh, we, we find out how good we are in Christ. So this day is good because of the goodness of God and that he makes not just good, but holy too. So it's a day of, of in, in the Catholic world, definitely of, of somberness. You know, at our service today, there won't be a lot of singing. There won't be a lot of um, um, instrumentation. Um, there'll be a lot of silence, a lot of, a lot of pondering. And in a sense, we recognize uh, just the power of the cross, but it's also a day that that's something much deeper than, than, um, than the things that are on the surface uh, here. There's, a, there's a spiritual battle that's happening in that God. And that's why, too, especially right now in the face of coronavirus and everything else, um, that death doesn't have the last word, that sin does not have the last word, that God's um, uh, love and his and his ultimately his life and resurrection has the last word. We uh, Our technology, unfortunately, may need an exorcism. We're having some some internet issues. Thank you. We may 
we may need a blessing. I apologize. You know, it's everyone. Uh, everyone is trying to use the internet at the same time, and so sometimes it uh, it, it has some issues. Uh, but again, you know, Friday's the day he died, um, uh, and then Sunday you celebrate his resurrection. Um, what what's the message that you think you'll give this Sunday in the middle of a worldwide pandemic? And what do you think God is trying to tell us through all of this? Yeah, yeah. I, um, that's definitely a question that comes up a lot. Is, is God chastising us? Are we being punished? Or um, um, is, is this a message to us? In a sense, I think it can be several things at once, maybe hundreds of things at once that God could be telling each of us as individuals, but also the entirety of the world. Um, I mean, I can't think of anything else that would shut down the entire world. It's kind of it's kind of a staggering event for, for all of us with just the frenetic pace that we maintain to all of a sudden be slowing down and uh, right in time for Easter. So I think the potential lesson, if, if, if we're listening to it, is um, is is that uh, to have our lives rooted in something bigger than um, our 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 jobs as important as, uh, as those are and our, um, our money or our, our material possessions, but it's something bigger than that, something that transcends even death. And we have that opportunity when we put our faith in Jesus. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there are some, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are, who are dealing with death right now. Uh, our community, at least so far has been spared. Um, <clears throat> But to those families who are dealing with that, um, does the message of Easter, you hope that'll resonate? Absolutely. Um, as someone who just, as part of my job, I have the great privilege of being with a lot of people in those final moments of their life. And even as they're preparing for it, and even after death um, with, with the family members and funerals and everything, I wear black, you know, as, as, that, <laughs> as that kind of reminder of, of, of death too. Um, but I think uh, anytime you walk into a Catholic church, some people are kind of struck when they see Jesus on the cross. They see not just an empty cross, but a crucifix. And I think uh, the message is always um, because we, we want to see love in the flesh. We want to see love incarnated. And that's, that's God's love incarnated, that he goes to even that scariest place of death. And that um, from that place is where he reigns. So if you're experiencing that, if you're experiencing the fear of death or the sadness of loss, to recognize that God has actually been there. That's not a place where you're far away from God. It's actually that uh, we have the potential through faith for that to be a place of intimate contact and encounter with God. Um, as as we have gone through this, you, your church and other churches have agreed that the best way forward was to um, social distance and not hold services uh, with a bunch of groups together. Um Sometimes it seems there's a conflict with science and faith. You know, we've had some pastors of, of denominations or whatever say, I'm going to hold church no matter what. But is that, is that a message you would disagree with or you at least take issue with? Because your church is certainly not doing that. Right. Well, I, I think it's important, you know, faith and reason don't have to be in conflict. A lot of times there's areas of tension, um, but faith and reason should be building one another up. So um, God has given us, God has given us um, uh, you know, the expertise and the know-how um, for, for um, medical insights. And so we need to, to trust that God is um, in and through that as well. So, uh, so yeah, so while sometimes we might be tempted to say, well, if, I, if I'm if I'm trusting the advice of doctors, pastors, or if I trust the advice, the advice of doctors, um, I would say that's kind of a false, false dichotomy. That that as as human persons, uh, we're called to engage both and live both in faith and reason. For those who only live in reason, thinking that that only science can save us or only doctors can save us, to recognize that 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 too has its limitations, and that's okay. Um, but it should give way to. Um, uh, to that our eternal destiny, um, which is is open to us by faith. So I, I wouldn't say it's a, a, a antagonism between them, um, but we definitely need to listen to good doctors, and just like a good doctor needs to listen to a good a good pastor or, or listen to the word of God. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we we also, uh, of course, you, you Saint Dominic's has been uh, televising their broadcast. You said for forty years, mm -hmm. but I I find it interesting that we. Um, we're having this pandemic in this age where 
at least if the internet works, you can still go to church. You know, my family has gone to church every Sunday. We've just sat in our houses and participated that way. Um, so I wonder if this taking place at this time with the technology we have, um, I certainly can remember, at least in my church, there was some, you know, some of this technology is bad or evil. Or it's taking us away from God. And now uh, we're using it. You know, churches are using the technology to connect with people. Yeah, and, and I, I would consider that a great gift. And, you know, what we went through following Hurricane Michael is is I, I had Verizon, so I couldn't even use my phone. Um, and so a lot of people had, had no contact right. with each other. So so we, we, you know, just being able to connect with each other and call people up is, is a tremendous gift. I think we, we also recognize that it's not enough. Um, you know, our faith in Christianity is incarnational, which means in the flesh. And uh, even in the Catholic Church, you know, the sacraments are such an important part of our faith that we encounter God in the flesh. And while it's, it's helpful and beautiful to hear a sermon, um, you know, on Facebook Live or to hear, you know, beautiful music on YouTube, um, to actually be there to worship with the community, to actually receive the Eucharist, Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity, and the Holy Eucharist, to actually become one flesh with him is so central to our faith. And I think this 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 time really just kind of uh, intensifies the hunger for that, for uh, personal contact with our friends, neighbors, and relatives, um, but also uh, with God. Yeah, that is a that is certainly true. I I know that um, lots of folks I've talked to can't wait to uh, go back to normal. Um, you know, and uh, I certainly hope we're going to get there and and get there sooner rather than later. Um, are there, or do you think there are changes in, in society, in the country and, and, and in the world that will happen after this? And, um, as we sort of grapple with what we've gone through? Yeah, I think one of the, one of the scary things for people is the fact that things might not go back to the way they were. Um, right. but one of the benefits I would say, hopefully for myself as a person of faith, um, and for other people who do believe is, is we recognize that no matter where this road takes us, we're going to be OK. Again, that God, uh, the message of Easter is that God is victorious, um, that that his his love and, and his life wins over sin and death and darkness. And uh, so being able to trust in that. And I think this is a real opportunity to to uh, begin to to trust and trust isn't just like a feeling. You know, it's not just a feeling. It's like I, I feel trusting. It's also a decision. Um, and and uh, we have an opportunity right now to say um, to not put my trust in well, as long as things go exactly back to where they were, as long as the start, stock market settles out exactly how I'd like it to, as long as, long as my 401k uh, works out or my job works out. But to say, OK, I'm going to put my trust in God. And when I do that, I'm putting my trust in something that can't be taken away from me. And uh, I think that that's always the invitation, as scary as I might be, to, uh, to put all of our trust in him. And uh, and, and with that, I think we're we're allows us to be more calm even in the midst of, of the adversity we're facing. Do you, uh, do you think that we're in some kind of uh, end times uh, sort of situation? I mean, you've got a pandemic. Uh, there were locusts in somewhere. You know, if you saw that story, but it got shared everywhere that I was looking. Um, you know, and, and part of me says, well, if you go, if you look at history, you know, there always seems to be something every 50 or 100 years that uh, is afflicting humanity. But, uh, you know, what, what do you take from, from these things going on in the world today? Yeah, I, I try to, to side with uh, what the church has been saying for the past 2,000 years is that we are in the end times since the time of Jesus. You know, and, and in the sense that Jesus has come into this world, he suffered, died, and, and rose from the dead. And so the time of the church is, is in a sense, this end times. So whether the world ends uh, tomorrow or like, you know, fiery, you know, blast tomorrow or a million years from now, we're still in the, the end times. And uh, so what does that mean is that, that we're called to live each and every day as beloved sons and daughters of God and furthering his, his mission of sharing the good news of, of salvation and hope with other people. So so I would say yes, but maybe not in the way that people sometimes kind of hope, not as salacious as, as people would hope for, you know, selling books and other things like that, um, sure. you know, uh, to recognize that, that yes, this, this is the end times. And, and just like we're coming to grips with our own mortality, you know, when we're talking about something that, that can't be seen and spread so easily and that people can be affected and infected by it. 
Um, well, that's that's always been true. Um, that we're always faced with with death. We're just really good at hiding from it. We're really good at hiding from our own mortality. And right now, um, we're recognizing it's kind of front page news and, and top shelf mindset um, of of death and mortality and illness and and, and respirators and limitations of, of healthcare and all those sorts of things. But that's always been the case. And so for us, maybe to to be reminded of the fact that that even in the midst of this, even if, if the worst case scenario plays out, um, that God still has us, that God is still with us and God still loves us and that he's, oh, he's, he's, he's opened a way for us. I love that 23rd Psalm that, you know, the, the church has been praying for 4,000 years. You know, the Jewish people comes from King David and we, we continue to pray it now um, that, you know, that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Um, not because, you know, there's not scary things around, not because bad things might not happen, but because he... He, the shepherd, is with us. And I think that that's the message that we need to, uh, to rediscover today. All right, I'm not going to top that. So I <laughs> appreciate you um, being here today. Thank you very much, Father. Um, and I want to thank everybody for watching. And I hope, uh, I hope they walk out of this with a little bit of hope. Uh, and I hope we're all, uh, uh, we do, the, do an interview again uh, next year at Easter uh, in person. So. That's my hope today. So thank you, Father Michael. Thanks, Brady. God bless you. All right. You guys are clear. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right. I don't know if any of that was usable, Brady, but hopefully. Um, it, it came uh, and went, um, but yeah. I, it, there was uh, – there were. Yeah, there were some good good answers there, and it's it's our end. We're working on our system again, and but the internet is just what it is right now because again, everybody's on it. But oh, yeah. uh, I think the second half of it came through pretty well. Uh, okay. We're gonna we're gonna cut something for the uh, 